everyone! Thank you for coming back to visit. My name is Carmen, I'm your Broadway Stitcher, and this is my floss tube number uno, dos, tres, cuatro, number four. Yay! So I hope you have had a dry week. Um, us here in the Northeast have not had a dry week. It's been quite the opposite. Basically, it's been raining every single day, um, and I send out my prayers and hopes for a quick dry out for anybody in New Jersey especially. We've been seeing all of the crazy amount of flooding. Um, the governor has issued uh, states of emergencies for some counties or for some cities. Uh, the level of flooding is just crazy, it's incredible. Um, people's houses are flooding up to where the windows are. Um, so yeah, everything, they're losing everything. Um, so hearts and wishes uh, for a quick and fast recovery for you guys. Um, and here in New York City, uh, we have had a lot of rain. Pretty much every day has been has rained, which really sucks because there's a fantastic program here in the city called Shakespeare in the Park, which we're going to talk about because I was able to go on Friday, which was actually really the only day that has not rained, I would say, in the last two weeks, right? Or pretty close. Uh, so we're going to talk about that. Um, if you are coming back to my channel, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. You guys are fantastic. Thank you for all the comments. I love them. I've tried to respond to everybody. So if I have not, I'm so sorry. Please know that I am going to respond as soon as I get to your message. Uh, last week, I was giving away a pattern for the Pansy uh, Scissor Keep from Sue Hawkins. So Tony Stitches in KY, congratulations, yay! Uh, you're the winner. I've sent you a note on Instagram, so if you could just reply back, I can get that out to you. All right, yay! So this week, uh, we are back on track with stitching. Last week was yeah, just horrible, and I didn't get much stitching, but back on track now. Started some new projects, started a new cell, and you know, 2018 for me has just been the year of the cell. I don't know what it is. I should just change my name to Sally because <laughs> That's a lot of what I've been stitching. And if you follow me on Instagram, you know one of the big projects I'm stitching, which is right there, which I'll show you later. Um, but we also have a brand new sal, one of a few that are starting up now. Um, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, so why don't we go ahead and get started? And before we get started, I wanted to mention two more things. Um, uh, Michelle S., thank you so much for your comment. She, when I did my video last week, I mentioned that I had not found the Sue Hawkins pansy patterns and kits, but she did find it. So thank you very much, Michelle S. They are still available. Um, they are 12 to $13 for the kit, which is a great price now. Uh, back when I bought it many years ago, I thought it was a little pricey, but that makes total sense. It brings the, um, the flosses, the pattern, the floss, the canvas and also the felt for finishing so it's a great price uh, definitely go check it out I'll make sure to put the link uh, to Sue Hawking's website down below so that you can go and visit uh, the second thing I want to mention is a sneak peek for next week I'm so excited uh, my stitching group is going to the cloisters uh, which is one of the museums here in New York City I'll tell you all about it next week trust me you want to check in next week because it's gorgeous it's all medieval religious type of art including these wall tapestries that are just incredible oh crazy crazy and they have a special exhibit about um some very fancy robes and costumes and the stitching on i've seen pictures i'm so excited uh looks fantastic so make sure you stay tuned next week but before we do that let's go back and now let's start talking about stitching for this week My stitching this week has all been focused on cells. Uh, if you don't know what a cell is, that's S-A-L, stitch along. Um, sometimes they're seasonal, so right now there's a few that are starting up for Halloween, there's a few that are starting up for Christmas, sometimes they're year-long uh, cells, sometimes they're mystery cells where you know the theme um, and maybe you get uh, one part of it at the beginning, but then throughout the year, uh, you'll you find each each month's section comes out and that's when you find out what it is and it's 
it's kind of exciting it's a little trepidatious especially if you don't like surprises uh, but I don't know for me this year has been the year of the sale like I said okay first one I worked on is which of course you know I will work on this first priority and look that's actually a pretty good picture uh, this is Ingleside Imaginariums Guardians of Notre Dame uh, Stitch this is one of those mystery ones at the beginning of the year we received the pattern for the frame and I finally got the whole frame stitched up yay um, which is great and then every month you get one of the little gargoyles which are inside here and there's a little close-up view so you can see we are eight in uh, there's four different colors a blue a purple a green and a pink and so we have one month left of each color oh I'm so sad because I love this project oh it's beautiful love the colors I love this fabric it's picture this plus I think it's called ancient if I'm not mistaken um, but I really love it and I'm so excited and I've already started to think about how I'm going to finish this because something this gorgeous just cannot go into a square frame right it's got to go into something special so stay tuned while I think of I already know what I I have a picture in my head of what I'd like it to come out let's see if I can make that a reality okay uh, cell number two <laughs> Uh, and you guys see this one often on my Instagram, the long dog sampler. And I am down here in this little tension hoop, which I usually stitch in hand, um, even for projects like this. But I found this uh, earlier this year, the three inch hoops, and I love them. Oh my gosh. I'll, in a future video, I'll show you how I do that. but. Oh, I love these. And even with this big project, yeah, look at that fabric. It's humongous, right? And so this is half the height. We're down in halfway of the year. Actually, half the height is right here. So there's still the other half to go. So this thing is pretty big, pretty chunky. Um, so I'll put that in and show you how I use this little hoop to actually uh, get my work all together and stitch in it. And you all saw my little whining on Instagram the other day. Um, I had to take out, if you look at this part of the circle, everything was stitched except, actually, no, I take that back. I think I had this guy stitched here, this bigger piece, and I had to take it all out because I was one stitch down too far. Oh, and I can't leave it because it matches up with another motif. There's a connecting motif in the middle and the other side matches up so I couldn't fudge it I had to rip it out and rip it back in and that was Monday that was yesterday so you know it's it was a typical perfect Monday but then you know what I went to the theater and I saw something fantastic um, so it all works out <laughs> okay my third project that I'm working on is one of those cells one of the new cells that came out uh, this one is for Christmas uh, this is the Peace on Earth Sal that is being organized by Sarah Elliott and Stitch All the Things. And links below to all of their information. They also have a Facebook group um, and there's a hashtag on Instagram. So the hashtag is CGS Peace on Earth Sal. And if that's wrong, you'll see the correct one up here. I'll have I'll also link it down below. Um, it's gorgeous. It's um, cardinal, right? Uh, with snow and whatnot. I'm starting down at the snow because I'm still waiting for my flosses to come in. And you know, white is white. So I ha I'm using an, an, an over dyed white. So it's not so stark white, but it's not the chalk, the called for chalk. I, I'm using whitewash. Um, I forget if it's gassed or waste that works. Pretty close, right? Um, but I should be getting the other flosses any day now. Um, I am using the Dove, which is kind of a green-gray fabric uh, version of it. So here is where I am. And that's the bottom with all that snow. And I griped it. Man, I was whining this past week. Sheesh. So if you have worked on Weeks Dye Works Linen, and that's what this is, it's a very loose weave and it's a very loose fabric um, and it's very soft and it jiggles and it, it doesn't stay in place. So I was just being whiny 
and I, I'm like, grubble, grubble, grubble. Um, but you know what? I found a solution. Put my big girl panties on and get on with it. Put it in a tension hoop. Awesome. Uh, the reason I like these tension hoops um, aside instead of the uh, wood ones is that I feel that it does it, it's not going to scratch my fabric as much as the wood ones have a possibility of doing with the wood you have the possibility of splinters um, and that tensioning of the outer hoop is annoying this one is pretty easy all you do is squeeze and that lets the inside ring out and then you can um, put it in. The nice thing too is if you push pull in that you can actually uh, set the tension and it's pretty tight. Uh, I'm being careful uh, of course as well um, because this is 35 count dove so I'm doing it one over two so one thread over two squares um, and it's coming along. <laughs> so you know, I don't know about you, but I tend to have very sharp images of whatever I'm either listening to because I love to listen to books on tape. Um, and because that lets me cross stitch at the same time, right? So I can multitask. Or I'll be watching, I'll be binging on some show or whatnot. So for this one, what I'm binging on is Castle Rock. <laughs> Talk about the most opposite thing I could be watching. Uh, Castle Rock is based on a book by Stephen King. So yes, it's all that crazy, scary stuff um, that Stephen King does. But for whatever reason, that's what I end up watching when I'm stitching this. So, you know, it's all good. Uh, maybe I can find something that's nicer or sweeter or funnier. You know what? Let me throw that out to you guys. Are there any shows on I have... Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime, and Sundance. And I have Showtime. So if, are there any shows that are comedies, and not just like slapstick comedy, but humorous, let me use that term, humorous, or fun movies or upbeat movies, because all I'm finding, and it's probably because I started watching some of these things, is scary and police and criminal and all that kind of stuff but um so yeah my, my watch list and my recommendations that's all it shows up with uh and i know it's because that's some of the things that i've watched before but i can't find any cute shows any funny movies romantic comedies i've seen them all right you know whatever but so anyways uh this is the third cell i'm working on actively and i think those are the three cells uh, but what I decided to do, uh, I know a lot of you are participating in the arbitrary August and I just can't. Uh, I can't do arbitrary. <laughs> there's things that I want to stitch on, there's things that I know I will stitch on on certain days and so for that, that's just a little bit too much stress for me. What I'm going to do though is I'm going to do Sal E September, so capital S A L lowercase ie September and I know hashtags doesn't matter what uh, uppercase lowercase you use but that's what I'm gonna do yay so I'm going to work on my sows for September and hopefully that won't get too boring because you know after you spend a couple of days on a project sometimes you want to change so what I'm doing is I'm doing a lot of days on sows but then I'm giving myself a break and I'm gonna work on a small project or something totally different just to give myself a break, but then I can come back to my cell. Yeah, so what do you think? Good idea, bad idea? Wanna join me? Please, let's do this. So I'll start tagging things um, as September comes along. Yay! And those are my whoops for this week. Let's go and check out some theater now. For today's On Location, we are going to do a two for one. Aren't you lucky? Uh, we're going to go On Location to the theater where I went to see a show that I'm going to recommend. Although, I know, I know none of you live here in New York, which I'm so sad about. I wish you all did because it's a great city. Uh, but this week's On Location is going to be the Delacorte Theater, which is located in Central Park here in New York City. 
Now the Delacorte Theater is an outdoor theater. It has 1,872 seats. So yeah, that's a lot of people. That's a pretty big Broadway house. Uh, if you're thinking, hey, what could that be like? Right. So maybe something like um, the, uh, I forget what theater it is, but where uh, Wicked is, where the marquee where On Your Feet was, maybe something like the Winter Garden where School of Rock is. So if you've seen any of those shows, then you have an idea of how many seats. It's humongous, uh, which is fantastic. Now, the Delacorte is owned by the Public Theater, which is a fantastic nonprofit organization here in New York City. Uh, it was created by Joseph Papp back in 1954. So they just celebrated a huge milestone a couple of years back. Um, and he it's wonderful so I'm gonna put a link definitely so you can get more information about him and the whole public theater but the the mission of the public theater is to bring out and to bring theater to the people um, and to also support up-and-coming playwrights um, their first production back in 1954 or 55 was hair yay can you imagine that was their first production? So they, they kicked off really well. Um, and it, hair, come on, hair is still around. It's still very popular. I would love to see it. I haven't seen hair yet. Um, that would be amazing if they did a revival of it uh, sometime soon. Um, but anyways, so they have um, fantastic theater. They do a lot of outreach into the community to make theater accessible to people. So they have their main theater, which is located in the Lower East Side. It's called the, um, it's their Astor Place Theater. It was actually the Astor, yes, those Astors library. Um, was it John Jay Astor? I think his son is the one that built it in, uh, it was completed in 1881. Um, and then eventually the public purchased it. And in 1962, Two, if I'm getting my dates right, or 1964, they the public theater took over that building um, and they converted it into this gorgeous theater. Uh, so they do off-Broadway um, shows is what they have. And they've done a lot of smaller shows. They get a, a, some great people coming and some great actors in there. Um, a little show you might have heard about, I'm not sure if you did, but there's this little show called Hamilton hmm I don't know maybe you've heard about it the, Hamilton was at the public in 2015 um, I'm just stabbing myself because I didn't see it oh oh I'm so mad um, way back when but anyways so it's a great theater uh, they're a nonprofit and one of the amazing things that they do every summer is called Shakespeare in the Park uh, and they have it at the Delacorte Theater which, as I mentioned, is 1,872 seats. So if you can imagine 1,872 seats for each performance times however the, long the run is, which is about two or three, three or four weeks per show, every ticket is free. Wow, isn't that amazing? It, I tell you, it's one of the best things here in New York City. If you have not experienced it, do it. If you're here during the summer when one of the shows is running, get yourself a ticket. There's a couple of ways to win tickets. Uh, the easiest one is on the Today Ticks app. Uh, there's an online lottery. There's also an in-person lottery at the Astor Theater um, downtown, uh, Lower East Side. There are also ticket giveaways in each of the five boroughs. So if you know that New York City is actually five boroughs or five big cities put together, They'll, they will actually go to each of those and give tickets away there, which is fantastic, right? Because it gets, it, it gets tickets into the hands of as many people as possible. The last way you could do it is if you go to Central Park, to the Delacorte Theater, and you stand in line. <laughs> I know, dude, it's so hot right now, there's no way. But you know what? It's kind of a rite of passage that you say, yes, I stood in line for five hours, waiting for my Shakespeare in the Park tickets. Uh, no, it's actually pretty, it's pretty cool. And you know, when you're sitting in line, everybody brings their chairs, some food and whatnot. There's bathrooms nearby that you can go. And you start talking to people and you make friends, you know, even if it's just for four hours. 
So very cool, highly recommend it. The show that is on right now is Shakespeare's Twelfth Night. So every summer they have two productions. One of them will always be a Shakespeare play. Um, and then sometimes they will put on a show that is non-Shakespeare as the second op uh, option. But this year we had two Shakespeare. So we had Othello first, uh, which was really good. And then Twelfth Night, which was really, gr it was good. It was really good. It's one of his comedies. Um, and they actually set it to music. So it was actually a musical, which is very cool. And the music had a New Orleans, jazzy, almost 70s type of feel. Uh, very fun, lots of fun. The stage was set uh, like a street fair uh, kind of situation. And they actually let people come on stage before the show started. So that, how cool is that? Um, and it was a great cast. They had a lot of people from the community. So they had a lot of different organizations from the community. I, I don't know how the process went. I'm just assuming here, I'm throwing out my idea. Um, have them submit and have people from those centers or those organizations be part of the cast. And they also did a little bit of sign language. Um, not too much. So it was almost a little distracting because they would only do one or two words every so often. Um, but it's, not, it's fantastic to know that they want to be more inclusive. And, and there are sign language interpreters at some of the performances. So if you, do, if you are hard of hearing, if you're deaf, they do have a signed performance and they'll sit in a certain area and sign the performance so that you can see everything, but you also understand what's, what's being said and what's being sung. Uh, so that was fantastic. Um, highly recommended, as I mentioned. It's called Shakespeare in the Park at the Delacorte Theater put on by the public theater. Ooh, that's a lot of theater. Woohoo! I like theater. Okay, now let's go on location and show you what that theater looks like, both from the outside as well as from our seats, which were really far up. We had row V, but it was a great view. That's the beauty of it. Every seat is a great view and it's free. So how can you complain, right? Okay, so let's go outside and take a look because we went on last Friday my friend and I, I got the tickets and you get two tickets, so I brought a friend. And it was the only night that it hasn't rained in I don't know how long. So let's go check it out. Hey friends, okay, so we're here at the Delacorte Theater in the heart of Central Park. And we are just waiting to get into Shakespeare in the Park. Fantastic program that the Public Theater has. That's a big off-Broadway theater organization here. Um, and they give out free tickets. So once we go inside, I'll do a little video too. So you can see what that theater looks like. It's amazing, it's humongous. And huge talent comes and um, does act the parts in there and they're all Shakespeare plays. So that's all we see here, which is fantastic. Shakespeare for the people. Um, now the cool thing is that all the tickets are free and what you do is you enter the lottery. There's a couple of different ways to do that. And if you win, you just show up, come pick up your ticket. And as you can see here, we're just waiting in line. And then there's also a cancellation line, <laughs> per se. So if people don't pick up their tickets, you see those people sitting there just waiting. Those people are hoping that people who got tickets don't show up and grab their tickets. Because at 7.30 or half an hour before the show, they start giving them out to the cancellation line. Okay, once we are inside, we'll take a look at the theater itself so you can see how amazing it is. Oh, and there's the ladies' line. What's new, right? Okay, and now we are inside the theater. So you can see this is not no Mickey Mouse situation here. This is some serious, serious theater. And it's humongous. All the seats are free, which is even more fantastic because that really gets Shakespeare out into everybody in New York City. So this is so cool. Today we're seeing Twelfth Night and the set obviously is a some sort of a street fair atmosphere and those are theater goers right there just on stage. There's some free popcorn down in that pink uh, parasol but I'm too lazy to go down there. Um, so we're just waiting for people to finish piling in. We are way, way back. We're in row V as in Victor. So we are very fine view. And if you can see a little bit, 
There's something sticking up right there into the sky. That's actually um, one of the turrets. Oh no, that's a building. But in front of that <laughs> is the Belvedere Castle. There's actually like a middle little castle that's here, and they're actually restoring it. That's why it's all um, covered in and whatnot. Scaffolding. Thank you, my. My theater buddy next to me <laughs> is helping me. My architecture major friend is helping me out with some of the words that are just way too hard for me tonight, as you can see. But the beauty of this is it is an open air theater. So as you can see tonight, we have a bit of an overcast. We hope it doesn't rain. <laughs> um, it's not bad, it's great. Uh, today's actually a cooler day than it has been. So it's not as bad as it's been with all this horrible humidity. But as you can see, the theater is humongous. I'll have to look up to see how many seats it takes. And we are just waiting for showtime. So let the theater begin. 15 minutes. That's your 15 minute call, everybody. 15 minutes. So what did you think about the Delacorte? Isn't that so neat? Oh, I'm so excited. Um, and yes, I go to everything that they put on for the Definitely last year, and I think the year before, but I'm not quite sure. Um, but anyways, it's a great show. Okay, so let's talk a few finishes today. And if you notice, there's a little space right here where there used to be something, and that's because I've got it in my hand. Let me make sure, this is, top is this way. Okay, so it's this, this is a needlepoint project that I did uh, last year, I think, I think it was last year. Last year or 2016, but anyways. Uh, if you take a look, that's showing up pretty well, actually. Yay, almost. This is probably this is just a really light. So this is all done in blues and greens and aquas, and these are my colors. I'm a blue and green ocean colorway person. So yeah, so isn't it good? But you know, it could go this way too, or this way. It doesn't really matter. Uh, but technically speaking, this is the top. And uh, when I finished it, I didn't want to just put it, frame it like normal. So I, went, I tried to do something fun with this wonky frame. And all right, I'll show you my back. I haven't finished it. <laughs> I really need to mount this. And I will at some point because it's wonky, wah, wah, wah. But it's all right, for right now it's okay. Okay, so this is called Mint Julep. It is by Needle Delights and this is the uh, pattern. And I don't know about you, but I fall in love with what I see first, and then maybe I'll try to tweak it if it's not quite my right colors. But let me tell you, if I had seen this just with this picture, I would have not purchased this pattern. No, look at that. It's got a pink tint to it, which is not, that is, there's no pink in this project, no matter what color way you use. Um, that should be either like an off-white. I did the darker border, but this in the picture, that's meant to be something like an off-white or a cream. Uh, so no, so it's really sad because, you know, this is, and I'm sure you too, you fall in love with what you see. And that to me just did not scream, oh, I wanna do this right now. Um, so I don't know, maybe it was a bad day, a bad printing day, but yeah, that's a little disappointing. But, the rest of it is fantastic. And it's not that big of a pattern. Um, every square, and I'm just looking to confirm. Yeah, I'm sure every square is a different stitch or a different pattern of stitches, uh, which is lovely. Oh, I had so much fun stitching this. And there are some metallics. For example, this part here, and it may not show up metallic. Those are metallics. This was a class put together by the Stitching Needle Society, SNS and I'll put links to them. Uh, so it was nice because we got, I'll show you just two seconds, right? We got some emails with added instructions, uh, how to do things and things like that, but we also got the pattern. So you can totally do this from your own. Um, this added just, I think, a couple of little things. Maybe it gave us a little more detail about the order of stitching. Yeah, I think that's pretty much because the, the pattern book is just, the the design the pat you know the design of the patterns um, it's not there's no s paragraphs or sentences telling you okay do this okay think about this which is it's fine not a big deal uh, the nice thing too is if you like if you don't like 
mint julep so your greens or your blues that's okay you you can select your own colors so if you're more of a pink purple a red orange you know whatever colors you like you can do that it was a lot of fun stitching this uh, oh 2016 so i actually let's see if i can find an empty space page yeah. let's see because i have the date here so if you can see i finished square b2 on 9 25 16 yay right there <laughs> so yeah uh so it was in 2016 wow hmm. who knew okay uh so that was needle point <laughs> Uh, as I mentioned last time, I think, I also like to quilt. Um, I love it. That's I learned to quilt back in 2002, 2002, 2003, in college. I took a college course of quilting the whole semester. It was fantastic. Uh, lots of fun. Learned how to make a lot of squares. I ended up buying a heck of a lot of fabric, which I still have a lot of. I know, I know, but anyways, it's all beautiful. And then I, I think to myself, you know, I really need to get rid of some of this stuff because I'm not going to work on it. I'm not going to make anything with it. But then I look at it and I love it and I fall in love with it again. I'm like, uh, maybe not, maybe tomorrow, another day, right? Um, so I took a quilting class actually out here in Long Island, New York. So I took a train. I took the Long Island Railroad, L-I-R-R for all you New Yorkers. <laughs> Um, I took I actually took a train out there because it's a it's a ways away and I don't have a car and I made a tuffet uh, I made the big footstool tuffet um, Which I'll show you in just a sec uh, But then I also and that was a lot of fun uh, Then I went on a trip to Wyoming and I found this tiny tiny one and it's so cute It's a pin cushion tuffet. So let me show it to you look at that ah oh, isn't that gorgeous arg oh it's so cute uh, and you can buy the kit which comes with there's a piece of wood here there's some cushioning um i don't remember i think the legs did not come with this the felt i think comes with it uh, so you get a lot of stuff the button here this is a covered button very easy to make um all the instructions and whatnot uh, how to make it. I don't remember if it came with the fabrics or not. I think Yeah, these fabrics I picked from a project that I'm working on. I'm working on a Jacqueline de Young uh, piece Ooh, If anybody of you knows it, I'll show her stuff later because oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Anyways coming back um, This mini tuffet. Uh, I think it's the 8 inch tuffet It's cute. It's super cute. I'll definitely put the link in to where you can get the kit uh, of that then she also has a bigger piece which is about this big and I have the kit I just need to make it um, and then I have the big piece so let me grab that and show it to you okay just like that movie magic <laughs> this uh, beauty is my tuffet um, it's got the gorgeous legs it's a little heavy so sorry uh, doing my weightlifting right here yes yes um, I took a class uh, we did two sessions the first session you learn how to sew up all the the, um, the strips together um, and then you take that home for homework you come back with it finished and then you come back on the second session and you finish it up uh, and it's gorgeous I love it I love I get as I mentioned with my mint julep, blues and greens, yeah. And add that brown and it's just gorgeous, right? Oh, it's humongous. Um, can you imagine bringing this back on the train? <laughs> L-I-double-R, but I guess I could just put my feet up and come back, right? No. Um, so I don't know about you, but my dirty feet are not going on this stool. And no one's dirty feet are touching my stool. So... <laughs> Uh, this is purely decorative. Um, I've sat on it a few times, so you can sit on it no problem. It, sque it squeezes down because all there is is this padding stuff. Um, but uh, it's just a lot of fun. Uh, so if you get a chance to make one, I highly recommend it. See, nice and finished and with the finishing stuff. Um, the kit includes all the everything but your fabrics. So there's a pattern, there's a 
like a interface type of pattern material that you actually stitch on. Um, the button for covering, the, the, uh, the legs, there's a big wooden piece in here that you stick your stuff into. Uh, yeah, so I highly recommend it. It's a lot of fun. It's a little expensive. I, I will say that. Just, you know. Uh, but come on, all our projects are expensive, right? <laughs> What's the difference? So that is my big tell it. All right, let's get back. And now back to smaller stuff. <laughs> no big tell it anymore. Um, and I like to dabble in things. <laughs> So I do cross stitch, I do needlepoint, I quilt. Those I do actively. I also learned how to knit, so I dabbled in knitting. Um, I learned how to crochet, but haven't done any really good pieces on that. Um, I needle punch, yay. So I'm glad to see that that's coming back. Uh, Priscilla and Chelsea are kind of leading the way there a little bit. Uh, and cross stitch and punch needle and cross stitch magazine which we all love, right? Oh, it's so fantastic. I'm so glad. Uh, if you haven't tried it, it's a fun project, fun uh, activity. And I actually learned out in Arizona at the attic. Yes, the famous attic. Yeah, I love that story. Oh my gosh, it's gorgeous. Um, but one of the other things I've dabbled in uh, is English paper piecing. Uh, if you haven't done it, it's really not, it's really a lot of fun. Take a class. You know, I love to take a class. If it were up to me, I'd take classes all day long. Um, but uh, I, I don't remember who I took this class with, but I have taken another class here in New York. Uh, back when the city quilter was still open, I took a class there. Yay! Um, and the lady that teaches it, she is now also teaching at Co uh, Compass Quilt, I think it is. They just opened a store. I put a link down here so you can see and maybe sign up. If you live in the area okay so this is a little pin cushion uh, no nope, not going to come up nice it's a little too bright uh, and these are it looks like diamonds yeah they're diamond shaped pieces and you just it's it's a hand stitched activity which is nice because it travels well um, in that case but it's cute I love it oh it's so nice Maybe if I put it here, nope, nah, not gonna work. Oh, uh, really cute. You can make a lot of stuff, uh, pin cushions like this. There's quilts that are made, English paper piece. I, one year, my family came here for Christmas, and so I made ornaments for everybody, circle ornaments, um, and I, <laughs> for everybody but me, <laughs> uh, because I had to make nine of them so by the time I got to mine, I didn't quite finish. <laughs> so it's actually, I know exactly where it is, it's right over there on my table. Um, and I really should get that finished because they came in 2015. So everybody has one except for me. Uh, but anyways, uh, it's a circle, a little circle ornament uh, made out of New York fabrics um, and it's paper piece. So they were e they're easy to make, they look really cute. Um, and I will show you a picture. I'll insert a picture right here. Of one of the finished ones so you can see what it looks like um, but I don't want you to think that I only have non cross stitch finished things so here is one cross stitch finish <laughs> a little one it's one of the Mill Hill Calaveras this is Calavera Azul or blue sugar skull uh, the, one of the Mill Hills and I got this at the cross stitch cover down in Florida down in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I was there for vacation in December or January. I went to see my parents in January, so maybe it was January. And I we were up there in Fort Lauderdale for whatever we were doing. And I said, hey, do you mind if we just stop here, blah, blah, blah. Because I had been there way back when, long time ago. Uh, I never went when I lived in Florida because I really wasn't um, in LNS's back then. My cross stitch was all, you know, Michaels, Joann's, that stuff. Hobby Lobby did not exist. It was really just Joann's and Michaels, um, where you got kits and things like that. And it wasn't until I came back for vacation after I moved away that I actually went. So I went to cross stitch covered many, many moons ago. And I actually have one of my yearly ornaments is from them. So I'll show you that coming up uh, in a future video. Uh, but anyways, I went back um, and 
I got this little guy because you know I always like to get a little something and I actually stitched him up so it's hard to see it's on perforated paper yeah perforated paper a uh, ton of beads they go pretty quick it's not that hard uh, cute uh, will I do the whole series because there's what six of them I think it was that there are uh, I'd love to um, but it just it might feel a little repetitive so maybe I'll do these every once in a while maybe maybe I'll just make it a yearly thing when I go visit my parents one time per year I'll go to stitch uh, cross stitch covered and I'll buy another one in the set <laughs> who knows right um, and those are my finishes no new finishes yet I really need to go finish one that I stitched and I actually finished it at StitchCon. It's my Christmas bell, so I just need to FFO it. Oh, I'm so lazy. It's just, um, I need to sew it together and to take out my sewing machine and get everything set up. I mean, those are the, the downsides of living in New York City. You don't have space. So it's a little bit of a hassle, but I will, I will. I really need to get to that. But anyways, okay. I hope you have a fantastic week. I'll see you next week and follow me on Instagram if you want to see much more of my stitching. I am Broadway Stitcher on Instagram or if you want to see more of my theater related uh, posts, that is I only theater on Y days and I'll put those up there. All right. Have a great week. See you soon.